We've been in this house, believe it or not, 20 years. We're approaching 21 years. And for me, landscape is really important. You know, I love huge trees. That's why I love the neighborhood. So it was very important for me to create this oasis. And especially because I don't have a cottage, this is my cottage. So the first thing I want to have is water. So I have the swimming pool and then the terrace and planting lots of trees. So this is my oasis in the city. The inspiration for the garden came really from the swimming pool. I wanted a formal pool and I wanted the grass right to the edge of the pool, to the coping, so that it really feels like a water feature as opposed to, you know, a leisure pool with lots of loungers and things like that. The gunite in the pool is a dark, dark gray, which looks this deep blue. And if you do a typical swimming pool that's white, it looks like this bright blue. This tones it down. And the waterline tile is a slate. So that again is subtle as opposed to mosaics that are bright and everything like that. Um, so you barely even see that. Well, I see a lot of swimming pools, which I cannot stand, which are surrounded by huge interlocking or stone decking. And I think, how many loungers? It's not a hotel. You don't need that much space. So I say to everybody, less hard, more soft. You want big trees, you want lots of softscaping. The upkeep isn't bad. I'm skimming the pool all the time because I like trees. So the trees hang over the swimming pool. So in the spring it's full, in the fall it's full, but I don't mind that. I just skim the pool and the perimeter of the garden is all in the... So upkeep for the garden isn't that difficult. The maple loses its leaves, but the nice thing about the beach hedge is that the leaves turn golden and they stay on it in the winter. But the nice thing about having huge leafy trees is in the summer we get all the shade and the winter when all the leaves are gone we get all the sun in the house and that heats up the house. So you always have to think strategically when you're planting trees. In Canada. Because God knows we struggle with the climate. And I planted all my own flowers, so. Did you? I did. All this I planted. All those I planted myself. I planted almost every tree. And then the huge ones were big, but they weren't like this. I mean, it was 20 years of growth. When it comes to the planters between the French doors and all over the terrace, we have an irrigation system. So there's a drip system that's a little hose that goes up to each one, it runs along the step. You don't even see it. So I never have to water the plants. And that was really important because sometimes I could be away for a week on business and I don't have to worry about these plants not getting watered. I like having non, you know, native plants in the garden for the summer. So we have a lemon tree by the barbecue, a lime tree by the barbecue, which we actually use the lemons and limes, the palm trees. You can have a lot of fun in the summer with planting. Now the lemon and lime trees are big and we put them in a greenhouse in the winter time. So we bring them out every year. Now the only reason why we have the artificial turf here is because there's no sun. So this would be muck all the time. I would replace the grass in these areas and along the back. It's never in the, that corner back there is never in the sun and this is never in the sun. So the sprinklers are going and it's muck. So I said, okay, I'm getting turf. And I loved it. And I just love the fact that I don't have muck. As long as this isn't it, like I don't want people putting a pool, fake grass and a fence. You've got to have all the green around. The same way the inside of the house is broken up into rooms, I did that on the outside. On this upper terrace, I have a dining room table, so that's our larger dining room table, that seats eight. I have a small breakfast table by the barbecue, that seats four, so that's a more intimate one. And sometimes we'll lay food out on that table and everyone will sit here and around the garden. And then off the kitchen door, I have the big barbecue, which has the grill and burners and a sink and is surrounded by the fruit trees. Gary. Definitely not me. I can't even turn on a barbecue. <laughs> I can make it look beautiful, but I can't activate it. When we designed the house, we altered the family room at the back with the three sets of French doors. And that is the sight line for the whole backyard. And between each set of French doors, I did the big planters, and that really softens the facade. And then instead of electric lights, I put candle lanterns, but I used brackets to hold them. And you can find those brackets to hold those flowering baskets. So I did those, painted them black, 
put the lanterns on them, and all that is centered on the swimming pool, and then this quiet zone out here. So you want to think of it the same way you think of the inside of the house, as rooms, if you have the space. Dining, lounging, sitting. So I chose all this furniture for my first house 30 years ago. And I chose this because I really needed low maintenance. And the beauty of it is, is with the rain and everything, it's perfect. Though you have to keep it away in the wintertime inside. But I love the maintenance free of it. The garden is everything I, I wanted. It, it really is my cottage in the city. And it really is the perfect garden. And it's evolved over the last 20 years. And I just think it gets better all the time.